Ecamm Live 4.1 has just been released and it's got some great new features. And if you've been involved in the beta group of late, then obviously this will be nothing new to you. However, um, you may have just sort of missed quite how much has been added in over just the last couple of months. So let's dig into what it all uh, involves, shall we? And I've just sort of split this down into some really sort of high level bullets here, but actually there's a lot more going on uh, within each one of these. So let's start off um, with a completely new type of overlay, something that a lot of people have been asking for. Um, and this is the new shape overlays. So if we take a look down in the overlays window over here on my uh, right hand side, down at the bottom here, you can see there's actually two more types of overlays added in, but we're going to start with this one, which is a shape overlay. It's this one that looks like the, uh, the rectangle, like the plain shape. Uh, so clicking on that adds in a rectangular shape like this. Um, clicking on the little pencil icon over here uh, will bring up the settings as you're familiar with uh, with Ecamm. When we've got an overlay, you can access the settings. One thing that I'll note here is that now they have kind of unified all of these different little pop-ups. So for all different types of overlays, you'll find that there is a lot more consistency now, whereas before things worked slightly differently for text overlays versus camera overlays and so on. Now there is a lot more consistency in the way that these work, as you'll see as we go through this uh, video. So here um, I've clicked on the little pencil icon and we've got the shape there at the top. So the shape style at the moment is rectangle, but I can change that to a square, uh, change that to a circle or change that to a squircle, which is one of those ones with that kind of dual radius corner going on. I'm just going to change that back to a square for the time being uh, and I'll make that a little bit smaller. Um, and it's got rounded corners. So let's just take those off for the time being as well. So it's nice and uh, uniform. Um, so this whole interface here um, is going to be very familiar as we go through the other types of overlays as well. There is actually some more options in here. So you'll see that this opens up and expands and I'll come to those uh, in due course as well. But to begin with, just to note that we can choose between one of those different four types of shape. Uh, then we've got the fill. Obviously, this is just a plain fill color at the moment. You just click on here to change. I'll change that to Ecamm Orange why not um, so there we have, can just change that to any color we want using the apple color picker in the obvious usual way uh, but we can also apply a gradient so if i click on here and go to gradient um, then we can also apply a gradient we'll see that we've got two colors now selected so you can come and change which one of those two colors you want to change between um, and you've also got this little rotary uh, dial here for want of a better word um, so i can now change that so you can see how it's changing uh, the direction of that gradient maybe if i make that more pronounced i'll change that to a, a more pronounced color change <laughs> you'll see exactly what i'm talking about there we go it's a bit of a disgusting match that is but there you go you can see what's going on there as i rotate that little dial uh, it is changing the direction i'll change that back to that it looks much more pretty uh, next you've also got motion and motion what that's doing is that is actually just rotating uh, that gradient around at a consistent rate there so you'll see that at the moment you've got the sort of darker color over on the left hand side and as i'm speaking it's moving over to the right hand side um, and back again so it's just continuously rotating so if you want something to use in the sort of background of your camera for example let me suggest i just put this over here if i come over to make this a rectangle and i'll just make that all the way over to here uh, and then that, let's just drop that down beneath my camera uh, this would be a way to get a sort of solid um, border around my camera but you can see how there's a bit of movement there so it's just adding a little bit of uh, of interest um, so that's one potential use case you may have for that uh, that that's moving gradient. Uh, let me just uh, make this overlay smaller instead of inadvertently ending this recording <laughs> like that. So let's take a look at what else you can do with uh, this. Uh, we've seen the motion fill and the solid fill, but we've got all of these other effects down here. And these are really quite interesting. So the first one is blur. Um, and now you'll see that we've now got a sort of transparent uh, rectangle on screen, um, but it is blurring out everything that is behind it. So you can see here, I can blur out that ecam. I can blur out the, uh, the writing there. Um, but of course, if I move it beneath all of that stuff, uh, then I could have it just blurring out my face. Um, oops, Daisy, let me try and put that back again. <laughs> I could have it blurring out my face, which would be a great thing, uh, but not necessarily blurring out all of that text. And if I put it behind the camera, obviously, then we're not going to see it at all. So now you can see how I'm moving this around uh, behind all of this stuff that's over on the right hand side. Um, and so it's only blurring my camera. I'll move it right up to the top again, though. 
So now we're blurring everything. Let's take a look at some of these other effects. So as well as the blur, then we've also got a few other options. So zoom, this is not to be confused with what I'm doing with my little pro mouse pointer here where I'm kind of zooming in on the screen. This is more of a zoom effect. So uh, looking like we're going at warp speed, that kind of thing. So zooming me out of the screen. It's not really a practical thing for zooming into something on the screen, as you can see. <laughs> the next one down on the list is motion. And this is kind of a similar effect, but it's simulating this kind of side to side motion blur, that kind of thing. And next on the list, we've got pixelate. Uh, this one I can see having a real uh, use case um, specifically for blurring out text on the screen. So if I'm doing something where I'm doing a screen share, maybe I'm showing something in account settings or something like that, and I wanna blur out certain information, uh, then we can use that pixelate uh, to sort of pixelate the information on the screen or uh, pixelate the pixel, uh, <laughs> pixelate the people if we're in uh, witness protection mode, that kind of thing. <laughs> there is also, as well as pixelate, then we've also got another one down here, which is called hex. Um, that's basically the same effect, but with hexagonal pixels instead of uh, square pixels, if that makes sense. You can see what happens if I sort of zoom in. We've got those little hexagonal shapes going on there. Um, next one down is uh, Comic. And you can see as well, this really highlights the fact that it is this shape that this is applied to. So if I was to make the shape much bigger and drag it over the full screen, then it is applying this effect to everything that is underneath it. And once again, if I was to move this down in the uh, the list here in the overlays and just put it just above my camera, then I could retain all of that stuff over on the left hand side, you know, all that Ecamm stuff. Um, but it's just going to apply that effect to my camera because that's the only thing that is underneath that within that stack. Because of course, uh, the overlays tab works like a, uh, a sort of set of layers, if you like, with things laid up on top of one another. So let me uh, come back over here and we'll take a look at some more of these different effects. Clicking on the pencil icon again, uh, we've seen the comic. So the next uh, three down are twirl. So we've got something looking like that. Uh, and you can affect the or change the uh, sort of strength of each of these effects by this slider. So I can come over here and adjust how much the uh, the, <laughs> the twirl is affecting uh, that way. And then you've got the pinch, which is this sort of effect, uh, sort of pinching everything into the middle. Uh, that looks quite, <laughs> quite hideous. And next we've got the bump. Now you may think to yourself, um, what is the point of some of these apart from just this uh, obviously uh, comical effect of using all of these? Well, actually, um, there's a great use case for them and people have been coming up with some really great effects um, that they can use these things for specifically in the Ecamm Live Beta group because of course, what is now Ecamm 4.1 was uh, Ecamm Beta uh, 4.1 dot whatever. There's been several iterations of it and there's some, been some really uh, creative um, use cases for this put into the beta group. And I'll just demonstrate a couple of them or rather just actually uh, shout out to those who have done them because uh, they are some great effects. And I'll just pull up uh, one in particular. So Martin McKenna, if you're in the Ecamm Live beta group, uh, you will no doubt have seen uh, Martin's uh, great uh, demos of this. Wrong one, I'll bring that one up in a moment. Here we go. <laughs> um, so Martin was basically combining a lot of these sort of effects that are changing what's going on in the background, um, but laying it over some other sort of motion graphics. So if you've got even just like a text ticker running in the background, and then you're layering up these different um, uh, effects over the top of it, you can get some really quite spectacular sort of motion graphics for the background. So uh, this is obviously creating something that is just a background during a live stream, um, you know, for a countdown or whatever, but it's all done just using those effects that we've now got uh, in uh, with those shape overlays. So some really great examples. Another great uh, person I've got to give a shout out to is Brian Cossack. He's been going into the beta group regularly as well just sort of showing how to use some of these things you can see the little sort of rotating gradient he's got going on in there Another chap, uh, Paul Dixon, who I've got to uh, mention as well, been doing some great ways or finding some great ways to use these new features. So if you're not already in the beta group, highly recommend uh, checking that out and checking get those folks out as well. But just coming back to our little demo then, and I'll pop my little shape back up onto the uh, onto the screen here. I'll go back here into my demo mode. Uh, right like this and so here I've got my shape on the screen so what else can we do with this well we've also got the uh, the fill effects which we've just looked at so let's take a look at some of the border effects so down here you can see we've got a border and it says none at the moment 
We've got the borders that uh, we're used to in Ecamm, um, but we've also got a few others. So as well as being able to just pick a colored border for that shape, uh, we can also use a gradient on the border itself. So separate to the gradient on the uh, the fill there, we've also got this same kind of interface here for adding a gradient to the border. And once again, uh, we can rotate this to show you know which direction that, that uh, gradient is sort of flowing in. Uh, we've also though got that motion gradient as well. So applying that, you'll see that that, uh, that border is then going to sort of rotate uh, around or rather that gradient is going to rotate around that particular shape. Uh, and then we can also, of course, add in our corner radius as well, just as you're familiar with, with the uh, camera overlays and screen share overlays too. Um, so we can also choose which corners to apply that to, uh, just as you are probably already familiar with. But this just applies to these shapes. Uh, the other thing, though, about these uh, this interface, I mentioned that this is kind of now familiar or at least consistent across different types of overlay. Well, one thing that I'm really pleased about is that this also now applies to image overlay because previously, if I wanted to add an image, uh, if I wanted to add a border, I should say, to an image, I would have had to have done that separately out of Ecamm and then uh, brought it in separately. However, now what we can do is if I just add in an image, so I've got my Ecamm Live Masterclass here, by the way, 25% off throughout this month of September. Um, and you can uh, get your 25% off with offer code Ecamm Tech. This is following on from the workshop I did on the Ecamm channel earlier on this month. Um, so uh, running that special offer, 25% off throughout the month of September. I'll talk more about that a little bit later. But uh, this is just a little thumbnail image like this. Um, and if I want to put a border on it, well, now I can simply click on the little pencil icon. We've got this familiar um, view here um, and I can change the border. So we've got a border color there I can just adjust the border width I can also add a corner radius to it as well if I want to give that nice little rounded corners uh, and as you can see we can do exactly the same as we're familiar with uh, with all the others so I can select the corners so we've got the exact same sort of um, effect there uh, incidentally we've also got things like the opacity as well uh, we could always make any overlay um, opaque um, or transparent like this um, but it's just nice to have everything consistent with a single slider for it in there I'll come to some of these other things in uh, in a moment as well. We have got some other little things that you can add into uh, into these little things. Um, but just note that you can add all of those same sort of gradient borders, the motion borders, and so on, uh, just like that. So I'll just leave that as a colored border for the time being and just leave it plain and change the border width like that. If I pop that little shape up, though, uh, there is uh, some other thing that we can add, though, which is drop shadows. So that is also in this little overlay window. Uh, and you'll see that down at the bottom here with this more options, uh, we've got this thing down at the bottom, which is shadows. So clicking on that, uh, you'll find that it's going to drop in a shadow. And if I just make this a little bit bigger, um, you can see that the shadow is coming in. I need to make it a little bit darker. Perhaps that might be it might help you see <laughs> what's going on. Um, there we can see that the uh, the shadow is it's difficult because I've got a black top on. That's probably the uh, the issue there. Um, I'm going to turn the blur down, uh, and now you can see that the shadow is sort of appearing. Whereas it's just here, so we're getting that shadow appearing uh, behind that uh, specific overlay. So if I just make this more blurred, it's having a sort of making it more of a uh, a, a blurred effect. Whereas if I take that all the way down to there, we've basically just got a, uh, a sort of solid black color in the background you can change the distance so how far that shadow is sort of set off uh, like that um, if I come in here and change the uh, the actual shading as well I could make that slightly more transparent in here as well that would be another way to do that and add in the blur but although it is called a um, shadow it's actually more than that because you could use it for a glow effect so if I just for example take off the border completely here um, and so we've now got that uh, that shape let me put it up here maybe that might be a little bit better uh, what we could do is if i change the uh, the color of this um to or sorry the color of the shadow uh, to something that is a lighter color then in effect we're going to get more of a glow so although it's called a shadow effect it can equally be uh, a sort of um uh, an outer glow sort of effect as well and we could take the distance all the way down to zero uh, and then check take the blur up and then it's just going to be a nice little sort of halo uh, around it and then of course we could just combine that maybe with a border uh, a solid border uh, reduce the width of it slightly and now we've just got a nice little sort of glowing effect going on on that particular overlay so um, that is the shadow effect and that applies to everything by the way so uh, we can use that with our um, image overlays with our camera overlays with everything all of these effects that i'm talking about can be used with uh, with all of those
So next up, I want to talk about another feature which we've got, again, sticking with overlays. This is the overlay update, it seems. <laughs> so down here, though, um, I mentioned the opacity. Uh, we've also got rotation, and this is something that applies to all overlays as well. So if you want to just have your overlays off at a jaunty angle, for example, um, then you can do that. We did have previously uh, rotation of camera overlays, um, but it was limited to basically 90 degrees and so on, whereas now you can just literally uh, come in here, go to the slide, slider there uh, and you can adjust the rotation wherever you want from uh, all the way around that way to all the way around that way so you've really got sort of total control over it. Speaking of total control, you can see that I'm here using this uh, little slider and I'm clicking on it with my mouse and I'm moving left and right. Uh, one thing that you might find sometimes if you're using a mouse is it might be tricky to get these numbers exactly where you need to. Uh, well, now, actually, if you just hover over it, uh, you can now use the arrow key. So I'm now just pressing the arrow key on my, uh, my keyboard and it's just sort of incrementing it by uh, one little point. And as soon as you move your mouse off that, uh, then it's going to uh, stop. But as soon as I put my mouse over that again uh, I'm not clicking on anything except the left and right arrow so that applies throughout the Ecamm interface so it's great for finer adjustments of uh, different things in uh, in here so if you want to just come and adjust text sizes uh, any any little slider uh, volumes and things like that uh, you can do that so just the same if I come here uh, I can adjust this on my master volume up and down as well so then if I come back into this shape, let's keep going through this, uh, this list. Uh, we've gone slightly out of order, but it doesn't quite matter. Uh, we've also got this thing called blend modes, um, and that is down here in the, uh, these extra settings as well. Um, and what this is, is it's where you've got a shape and you want to apply some sort of effect to whatever is behind it. So this is going to be easiest to demonstrate with, uh, if I just sort of put this over my face here like this, uh, and then I'll go to the blend mode. Uh, you can see normal. If I go to darken, it's basically going to apply that color um, to whatever is in the in the background. In fact, let me just take the shadow off. There we go. If you've got the shadow on it, uh, then that's going to be casting a shadow behind everything. So we don't want that on. Uh, but what it's doing is it's kind of applying that uh, the color of the overlay um, to whatever is behind it. So there is darken. Uh, we've got multiply, which is kind of like adding those colors together. Uh, color burn these if you're familiar with uh, uh, like photo editing in Photoshop and things like that uh, these kind of blend modes are all going to be familiar with uh, to you so uh, color dodge uh, soft light various different things like that so uh, that is just removing that color from the uh, from the background for example so uh, these are all the different uh, blend modes I'll leave it to you to go through and uh, and to try all of those different ones out um, and it depends on obviously what you've got the blend mode set to uh, and then also what the uh, the primary color is that you've got uh, the main color that you've got the uh, the overlay set to as well but you can see the kind of effect that that's having and once again this applies to anything that is behind that uh, and this is where some of the folks in the beta group have been having uh, real fun just sort of layering up multiple different effects through using multiple different shape overlays uh, to get all of these different effects going on so that is the uh, the blend modes um, whilst we're in here as well there are a few other things just to uh, to mention um, namely uh, this one down here which is we've talked about the rotation so I can put that one uh, back to uh, straight there uh, we've also got a new transition here so previously you could have things fly in and out from the uh, from the left and right let me just take that uh, blend off uh, the uh, where is it on the blend mode I'm just gonna put that to normal so we just got a plain shape um, we've got this uh, transition though so fly in from left right top bottom uh, we've now also got these ones which are spin in um, and so this works something like this if I hide the overlay you'll see how it spins out show the overlay again and it spins in from this side and once again this transition is going to be the same for um, all different overlays so if you've got your image overlay here you can see how we've got the transitions there as well um, as the shadows the blend mode and all of that kind of stuff so uh, what I'm talking about here for shapes does apply to uh, to everything else as well um, so that is the blend modes. So then there is uh, another thing which is related to uh, overlays again, uh, and it is this time related to um, green screen. Previously, we obviously had green screen with cameras, so you can use green screen to great effect in Ecamm if you've got a camera and a green screen behind you. Uh, you can also do some creative things if you are wanting to do screen sharing using green screen because you can toggle on the green screen effect. So you could bring in a keynote slide, for example, with a green background, and so that would be a way of bringing on animated graphics over the top of your uh, 
uh, ecam uh, production and that's something that that i've done lots of other people in the ecam group have done as well well now they've added that green screen ability also to uh, videos and photos so that means that if you've got a graphic that you want to bring into into ecam uh, and you happen to have it with a green background uh, then you don't need to sort of key out that separately and remove that before you bring the image in you can just bring it in drop it in and turn on that green screen effect you can also do it with videos and this is something where i think uh, you know people may want to uh, to try this out so here you know if i want to have a little <laughs> since i'm in thailand uh, a little elephant walk across my screen i can do that if i've got a video uh, on green screen and it's quite common that you can find these sorts of things on uh, adobe stock or various different places like that where you get the uh, video with the green background for you to then bring into your editor to key out in in post but obviously we don't want to do that with ecam we want to do everything in one take or at least uh, certainly i do so with this we have this uh, little elephant um, video so if i just show this one um, here i've just got a, a little video which is this little looping thing of an elephant walking across the screen um, so all i need to do is go into the settings here uh, and what you'll see is we do have the option uh, to toggle on green screen and it's actually in this blend mode so if i go into the blend mode here for this overlay and toggle on green screen um, then you'll see that the uh, green disappears let me just show that again so there we go. I'm going to toggle it on and off now. So if I just maybe if I just pause this, that might help. Uh, so I've paused that little uh, that, that little animation, and I'm just going to go into the blend mode and show it either in normal or if I toggle that onto green screen, you can see what's happening. It's just keying out that green screen in that particular video. So I know that that is something that uh, a number of people have uh, have asked for. So it's great to have that uh, that in Ecamm now. So that is overlay green screen that we've just mentioned. We're just down to uh, here right now. <laughs> so the next one that I want to talk about then is text formatting. And there's actually a few great um, updates when it comes to text formatting. So we have, in fact, got an entirely new text overlay, or at least um, there's a new way of accessing it. So let me just come down to my overlays window again. Uh, previously, if you wanted to add in a uh, text overlay, you will be familiar with clicking on this button, and this will bring up this box. We add the text in, and there now we've got our text somewhere on the screen. Let me just zoom into this text a little bit. Uh, there, I've got my text box. Uh, well, previously, if you wanted to adjust things like the border and the background and so on, you would have done that in that little text, um, uh, the text window there. Uh, whereas now they've made it sort of consistent, and this is what I'm saying about you know, we've got this consistency now with overlays. Now we've got this familiar thing of being able to change the background. So if I want to put a colored background in, if I want to change the uh, the text margin, so the size of it, uh, everything is done from this little pop out window here. If I want to add on a border, I can add in a border to it as well. So let me give that a white border. Why not uh, change the border width? Um, so we've got this familiar pop out here where we're going to change all of that. Uh, we can still obviously go and edit our text. And so that we are going to do from here. So this little edit text button here. Um, and so whereas previously we used to have our controls for things like border and, 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 and color over here, uh, we have still got the text color because you may want to change individual words in the text for example like this is just one text box where i've got ecamm 4.1 uh, so i wanted to change the color separately to the 4.1 versus the ecamm so we can still do that separately here um, just by highlighting the text in the window uh, we can also do all the things we could do before changing text size and so on but there's two new things that have been added in here um, one of them is kerning so kerning is the distance uh, between the uh, letters so if i just maybe make this text a little bit larger so you can see what's going on uh, and actually what i'll do is i'll make a couple of lines of text so I didn't want to change to that scene. That's a <laughs> completely separate scene, a demo of uh, taking Zoom into Ecamm. Anyway, let me just uh, place this text down here. So now if I highlight all of this text, we've got uh, kerning, which is the distance between the letters. Um, and then you've also got line height, which is how uh, how how far between the lines so now we can adjust that kind of stuff so that gives us a lot more control over the way that our text looks on screen um, one of the ways that these text boxes have always behaved though is that if you dr drag the corner uh, and expand it like that you can make it larger or smaller um, and you can also drag the side here if you want to make it uh, wider but what that means is if you actually go into this text and edit it you might well be very precise in terms of setting a text font size here so let's 
let's say 18 and I'll click on that. Um, but then what I could do is I could duplicate that text box and I could expand it. Uh, and then if I go into here, um, it's going to still tell me that the font size is 18. But clearly, it's a different font size to the other one, which in theory is a duplicate. So um, actually, this way of uh, creating text boxes always had a couple of issues, certainly for me and I know for, for others as well. So what they've done is they've added in a completely new type of text box as well, um, which is this one down here. And the original text boxes, they are now uh, calling dynamic text boxes. Uh, and these ones here, which is this new type, is called uh, just a text box overlay. And clicking on that, you're going to get the exact same uh, interface. And in fact, actually, it's just a new way of accessing this text function because uh, we can also change the style up here. So uh, whereas uh, normally it would go into a dynamic text box, which is the ones that we are familiar with, uh, we've now got basically these extra two in addition to scrolling ticker. So we've always had scrolling tickers, but um, now we've got these extra two here. And I'll talk about the difference between them in a moment. But uh, basically now this text box is going to behave slightly differently because as you can see the text box here if I change the the size of it, um, it the text is actually staying the same size so we're, it's more like a, 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 a I was going to say a traditional size <laughs> style text box but I think you know what I mean whereby the text is going to stay the same shape now it will actually reduce the text if we get to such a point that it is uh, you know so tiny on the screen like that then it's obviously going to try and preserve the, uh, the 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 text so that you can see it um, but in general it's going to uh, stick to whatever text Next font size uh, that you actually put in there and so this is much better I mean this is what I've done over on the uh, this side over here where I've got these different things in this is just a text box um, and then uh, you know everything's just sort of filling up in a uh, in a more more logical way and consistent in terms of the text size now, if you did have a lot of text in here, um, you could have the issue where it's going to uh, sort of shrink it and you may not actually want that. So if I go into edit text and then I'll just go in and put in some uh, long form text. So uh, there we go, Lorem Ipsum, why not? And uh, look how quickly I can type. <laughs> the stream deck adding it in uh, click on uh, save uh, and so now we've got a box with some more nicely formatted text of course we can click on here we can go into the edit uh, and we can change the formatting whether it's centered left or right justified and so on so let's put it in the center for now shall we um, so there is a couple of options then in terms of the layout so uh, I mentioned that it is going to sort of shrink down the uh, the text but actually you don't have to have it doing that at all and if I come in here, you've got the option of either shrink um, or truncate. So instead of it shrinking down the text, which it's going to do quite a lot now since we've got a lot more text in there. Um, and by the way, you can see it's not completely shrinking it down. There is some spill over, but it's just doing it as much as possible. Uh, but if I click onto here and I go into this one and say truncate, um, then what's going to happen there is it's completely preserved the, um, the font size, but now it's just basically truncating it based on the size of the, uh, the box. So you've got those two different uh, different options there so that is the um the new uh, text boxes um and the other thing that we've got with text as well that you might be interested to do is again more for sort of an effect if I come over here and I go to this text, uh, we do have this option for text cutout. So if I click on that one, uh, what's happening is, and probably I need to just go in and I'll just change this text a little bit uh, so that it makes it a little bit more obvious. In fact, let's just give this a, let's call this just title like that. And I'm going to uh, adjust the, uh, the kerning slightly in there and the font size, I'll make that much bigger like that. And let's make it nice and bold, shall we as well? Uh, and then click on save. Um, here you can see that uh, what we've got is a uh, sort of transparent cutout. So what I need to do is just make that a little bit bigger so that the E wraps around. <laughs> uh, let me come over here and do this this way from this side. There we go. So now we've got a sort of uh, title block. And then what I can do is I could adjust the uh, sort of space around that. Uh, where has it gone? Text margin uh, to increase that margin around there. So now we're basically getting a title that's uh, covering the screen. Um, I'm making a bit of a hash of that. I would need to just adjust the size a little bit more. But this is where you could have an effect of, uh, you know, being able to see through, you know, maybe in a countdown or wherever you might want to have it so that you've got this effect of being able to see through. Uh, maybe you want to just change the, uh, the background of that. Let's change the background here to a uh, plain background with some transparency, something like that to give you uh, the 
the view through the uh, through the title there again i could be doing this a little bit better if i spent a bit more time on it but that is just another effect that we've uh, we've now got uh, i just want to mention once again the ecamm live masterclass though uh, this is over 100 lessons uh, all to do with ecamm live you can get lifetime access and as i say because i've just recently finished the ecamm tools and tech workshop uh, as a bonus for that i'm also offering 25 percent off all of my courses in fact over on uh, take one tech.io but you can get the ecamm live masterclass at the ecamm live masterclass.com 25 percent off with the offer code ecamm tech uh, and this is lifetime access by the way and with all of these new updates that have just come out in the ecamm live 4.1 i'll be adding these all into the uh, the course content as well the regular price is 147 dollars uh, but with that 25 percent off it's something like just over a few cents over 110 dollars so it's a great way to uh, stay up to date with all of the latest updates as and when they uh, they come out so uh, check that out you can find a link down in the description but uh, for now though let's get back to the demo and let's get back to the updates um, so apart from the uh, text formatting uh, another thing then that they've updated is comments and reactions when it comes to your live streams so if I just add in a sort of dummy comment here and what I'll do is I'll come back to demo mode I'm going to add in this comment uh, which is somewhere down here. Oh, it's right up at the top. Here we go. I've got this uh, little comment here. This is just a placeholder comment. You may have been familiar uh, before when you are adjusting comment sizes um, that the uh, the the icon here for the uh, the person who has left the comment uh, just got sort of huge if you made stuff uh, narrow and then if also the depending on the text size, you know how far this was spilling out. You could in theory be in a position where the little avatar there of the uh, the person uh, would be just absolutely massive so this thing down here could be you know taking up a huge amount of space on screen well they've added this little slider here uh, over on this side uh, my little pro mouse has just uh, decided to stop working uh, where is it gone let me just try that again uh, this little slider just here there we go so now I can adjust the maximum size um, of that particular um, overlay, uh, sorry, of that particular uh, avatar. So if I take that down there, you can see how we can make that much smaller. Um, and also the way that these um, text boxes now work is more similar to the text boxes that we uh, talked about earlier. So uh, you can see how that sort of, sort of spills around uh, and the way that it expands open. But that thing of being able to adjust the avatar size is something that I think is really useful. Uh, here, I just want to mention again uh, the great work of the folks in the beta group and specifically uh, in this case, Paul Dixon. He came up with a great use case for this new comment style. So uh, I feel a little bit uh, old school now because all my comments tend to come in on the screen like this. But what he did was actually create a dedicated scene um, for comments, which looked something like this. And you can see that what's going on here is just uh, there he's got sort of a white box using the shape overlays there. So a nice rounded corner white box. Um, there there is a little sort of um, quote marks somewhere around there as well that are just sort of embedded in there from uh, text, but then bringing in the comments uh, like this. And I just thought that that was an absolutely excellent implementation of comments on a live stream. So rather than having them just, you know, popping up during the live stream, if you've got a dedicated segment in your live stream where you're going to go over and take comments, why not make a big thing of them in this way? And I just thought that that was an absolutely excellent uh, implementation there from, uh, from Paul. So uh, outstanding work. And he's been doing some great stuff with all of these different kinds of overlays, you know, creating like this sort of glass effect and, and, all, and all sorts. So highly recommend uh, checking, uh, checking him out as well. Um, as well as the um, overlays, whilst we are still talking about uh, comments and reactions then, um, the other thing that's been added in is if you are on a live stream and you've got your comments and reactions window open, uh, I'm not streaming at the moment, so you don't see it, but normally you would see that you've got all of your comments. There's also a search box where you can search for things like the Q colon. So if you hear everyone in Ecamm uh, in the in the chat, Mr. Moderator Paul Duncan always saying put a Q colon in front of your question It's because you can filter and search by those different things um, so that's nothing new however what they've added in is now when you get super chats they will uh, appear in their own dedicated section so normally you've got the main chat you've got things that you favorited um, but now you'll also see them in the uh, a dedicated super chat um, segment as well if you've got super chats coming in they will also show up in your uh, favorites as well just by default so it's uh, it's great that they've added that in for super chats 
The other thing related to Super Chats is if I go over to my uh, little uh, Ecamm preferences over here, and I'll just toggle these on. Here we go. If you look in the shortcuts menu, um, then you'll see that we have now got a, uh, a Super Chat uh, shortcut trigger as well. So uh, these are for linking in with Mac OS shortcuts. So if you want to have it set up so that some sort of automation happens uh, when a Super Chat arrives, uh, you know, you could literally have it flashing your lights on and off, whatever you wanted it to do. Um, so it's great that that has been added in as, a, as an option there. Um, I'm not quite sure what I would have it do with my setup because I'm not <laughs> using shortcuts for that kind of thing, but it's there nevertheless if you want to have it, uh, have it do something. So uh, great to see that, uh, that integration. Um, another final thing that I'll just mention then as well is uh, getting away from overlays is in the profiles menu. So if you come up to profiles up at the top, uh, they've now added a recent section. So whereas before you would just see a whole long list of all of your different profiles, uh, now they've added in this uh, little recent section, which will have the uh, latest ones that you've been working in. So it just makes it uh, sort of quicker to flick from one thing to another. Uh, so that's it for this update. Uh, really. Uh, fantastic and, and packed out update as well it's been about two months in beta so uh, that this has come out and i think we're up to beta six or seven i can't remember so these things have been filtering out and sometimes i find that when you're on the beta program i mean i use the beta almost exclusively uh, you kind of forget like all these different things that have been added in and so it's only when you come to take a look at the actual release at them all grouped together that you realize uh, this is really just another fantastic update uh, what i'll do is i'll leave a link to some of my other e videos over on the uh, right hand side so if you want to check those out it's a great way to uh, to find out and learn more about ecamm and don't forget to check out that 25 percent discount through september off all of my courses link in the description